what we're going to start today here is um, a discussion of electricity. And I would suggest that you do not listen to this with the intention of taking notes. Don't try to write it down. Don't try to memorize it. You'll get enough out of it to uh, accomplish the purpose. And that's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to make you engineers. You're not going to go out and build equipment. You're probably not going to do very much in the way of repairs. It's the tool that makes this possible. And therefore, it seems to me that any course would be a little lacking if there wasn't some reference to the medium that makes your profession possible. Now, you can all drive automobiles, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you know how an internal combustion engine works. And I don't even know all the details of the small devices they've got on my car because I can't figure out what they're doing yet half the time. And one of the reasons for doing this is for your future protection. You never know when somebody's going to come along with a magic black box and tell you, here is something that does something that is terrific. You don't feel anything, you don't hear anything, nothing comes out of it, but it's marvelous. If it kills hair, it'll only cost you $1,000 and you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, you can use it for 30 days, tweeze all the hair out of the patron's face, and at the end of 30 days, none of those tweezed hairs have come back because it takes longer than 30 days for a tweezed hair to return. So you've bought yourself a black box, which may have a dead mouse in it. Now, this may sound silly, but we've gone through this several times. Many years ago, there was a machine put out called the Chaleur. It was a little black box, about so big, and had two needles on it. You put the two needles down into the follicle and sparks jumped across the two needles. The idea being when the spark jumped across the two needles, it would saw the papilla off. Well, we can't even see a papilla. How do we know when we've got between the two needles? We don't. Electrologists bought these machines, and for years, this was sort of a secret little thing. Everybody bought one. Everyone found they didn't work. And nobody said anything to anybody about it. They'd all been taken. About two years ago, a photoepilator came out, which was going to kill hair with light rays. It came on very strong by a very competent group of engineers, Stanford Research Institute, Stanford Medical Group. It's not on the market today. They sold for about $2,000 a piece. There were electrologists in the association that swore by them said they were the greatest. As far as I know, if any hairs were killed by them, it was only by accident, because the electrologist poked the needle in the follicle so many times, she eventually killed it. She could have done the same thing with an ice pick. Now, there will be more. This is a field which lends itself towards fast buck artists. There tends to be something about this field that causes people to uh, exploit it. And it's easily exploitable because n almost none of the people in the field know what their equipment is or how it works or how it functions. Until my textbook came out, no one explained how high frequency worked. Not even the journal came out of New York ever gave an explanation of how high frequency affected the, the hair. It's what the whole process was. And the book only came out, you see, in 69. So it's just a relatively few years where anything has been put into writing that explain the idea of demonstrating it on an egg or on meat. This had not been done before. I had been teaching it in my school for many years, since 1958. This was a regular part of my training. In listening to the story about electricity, we'll lead you through magnetism, and through static electricity, and through current electricity, which are basic things. At various stages, I'll try to relate it back to the business of hair removal. And then we'll go into the galvanic and the high frequency. At that point, we will have involved the two basic currents that are used in the business of removing hair. Now, as far as I know, there is no third current available to electrologists. I know of no other current that could be used in this particular field. You might say microwave. That's 
a kind of high frequency. There may be uh, types of currents that are up in the laser beam range, but at the present time, the laser beam is not available to the uh, layman. The laser beam may one day be available in some form, but we don't know yet the effect of causing the laser beam to be projected into the follicles. And if they did ever perfect it, it would turn out to be only for use by MDs. Uh, the only two currents that we're ever going to be allowed to get our hands on will be galvanic current and high-frequency current. Passing around the uh, permanent magnets to show how they tell and attract. Now we'll use just the uh, the one magnet first. So there you see the magnetic lines of force. Now notice that they tend to align themselves in loops. They loop from this end to this end, this end to this end. And they also don't like each other. Notice they tend to separate. The lines of force do not cross one another. Uh, this is one of their characteristics. Now, if we put two magnets together, now we'll set them so they're attracted. We'll separate them a little bit so that you can get the lines of force between them. These things are called magnetic lines of force. Here you see the loops going from here to here, and then loops from here to here, and loops from here to here. Right in the middle, this is the important part. Notice that they go together. The lines of force tend to go straight across in the middle there. Now we'll fix them so that they repel each other. And we'll see what the lines of force look like when they repel. Now notice right there in the center. Now you felt this. Now notice here in the middle, the lines of force go this direction. They oppose each other. When you had the north and the south pole together, they went across this way. But now you see them pushing. So these lines of force that try to come out here now abruptly turn. Now, you felt the repulsion between the two magnets. It must be real. Though. You can't see the wind, but you see it blow the leaves and the papers down the street. And now you see something that follows them. And that is the thing that makes our whole civilization function, you might say, electrically. The production of electricity is the manipulation of magnets past coils. It's lines of force that produce our electricity.